Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to show you how to do exposure blending for real estate photography exteriors. Now this is a technique that I talk about in the exteriors book and it's pretty simple to do. It's an alternative to trying to use HDR to overcome the common problem of having backlit houses. So if you've been out shooting and you've got a sun that faces the house, fantastic, but it doesn't always work that way. So the tempting thing to do is to to say well let's shoot a bracket and let's just use HDR to figure out where everything should be filled in but the problem is is that twofold one HDR will try to figure out every single little bit and pixel throughout the entire frame that needs to have the dynamic range adjusted all you want to do though is just adjust the shadow area so you want to bring that exposure up also the problem is is that if you're using auto white balance you're going to have the uh, different white balances throughout those three exposures or more that you're bracketing with HDR but by controlling it with exposure blending you can then better control the white balance so I'm going to show from start to finish what it takes to do this very simple process with a few bonuses along the way you ready to get started let's take a look so this is our first example and this shot here is exposed for the house but it's not exposed for the sky or anything else. So in a bracket, this was then a darker exposure. So with from the bracket I was able to take this particular shot and then this which is one stop brighter and I've got enough to do exposure blending. Now the trick here though is that the white balance is going to be different. If you notice here my white balance slider is down to negative seven. The white balance on this brighter shot was here and that's not bad. It's fairly reflective of what the color is but it's not exactly accurate. Remember that the white balance varies between daytime and also shade so you're going to have a slightly different white balance inside here. So to, if you want to correct for that which I do recommend is you adjust that slider. Now these are TIFFs and these are for reasons I explain in another video and throughout my books when I'm doing exterior I like to first convert them using OEM software. A little off topic for this tutorial, but anyways, let's go ahead and get started with this. So anyways, these are TIFFs. And once again, only for exteriors I'm using TIFFs that have been converted after I've uh, played with the raw files and OEM software. So I'm going to take that slider once again down just a little bit, just about negative seven is about all I need because this wasn't a deep shadow. And then I can take both these layers and edit those as layers in Photoshop. So now I've got two images that are going to load up as layers, but this was handheld, so I need to auto align them. Now I've got a macro, uh, excuse me, an action that you've seen me use before, but I'm going to do it manually so you can see the whole process. You grab both of those layers, and then you go to uh, edit, and then auto align layers in auto, and that does a pretty good job of lining those up. Then you take the brighter exposure and add a layer mask to hide everything. Layer mask, hide. Now, zoom in here a little bit, take the quick selection tool and select the house. So you can select and be rough about it because we're going to uh, tap some of that in to blend it. Where it gets a little bit tricky is for instance in the corner of the house over here and something like that. You might want to play around with a little bit more and I'll just do a little bit here just for this example. But you can do it as much as you want and that's okay to leave that bush out of there because I'll show you what's going to be coming next. The one thing though is you want to make sure that the lines are very well. There's a little bit that's missing down here. So I'm going to select that around the edge of that particular uh, curb that was there. And the rest of that looks good for right now. So what I'm going to do is swap the colors so that I can get another control out of using my delete key. It's a little trick here. Swap the colors by hitting X. Now that I'm on the layer mask for that bright layer, I just press my delete key and that actually then paints it on because the colors are reversed. Reverse the colors again with X, Control D to deselect it. Now I'm going to use a brush. I'm going to tap in the areas that didn't blend as well. I'm going to use a low flow brush of just 20%. You can see my flow up here is 20%. And now I'm just going to tap in some of these other areas to try to blend those a little bit better so as I don't have rough lines. You can use this for other areas to brighten that up as well. So that's good. Now you can do while you're in Photoshop some other techniques. Let me go ahead and just flatten this first. So that's the exposure blending portion of it. And now you can use uh, like your touch-up tools if you want to, and I could remove uh, some of these leaves as I want. And if you know uh, from my other books and videos, I'd rather do it in Photoshop than Lightroom because these tools are far more accurate inside of Photoshop. So anyways, that's the basis for it. Let's go ahead and do Control-S to save that, 
and that will load it back up into Lightroom. Then we merely apply like we normally would one of our bumps to it. We can start cropping things down a little bit. Now at this point, if I wanted to add more, bring up the shadows a little bit more in the front of the house, I could because I'm not pushing it very far. If I had used just a brush to bring it up at least an exposure, once I added my bump and I was upping my shadows even more and my whites even more, I'd really start to lose quality out of it. But anyways, once I'm into uh, to Lightroom, then I can do just about anything that I want to that I normally would. I have an exposure blended shot. So once again, what we started with was here's a shot, it's backlit. So during a bracket, I was able to pull out one stop higher, took both of those and exposure blended it for this particular shot. Now that had a good sky in it. Sometimes you don't have that. So here was uh, our bright shot out of one bracket. And I'm stepping back farther so I can crop this down later, something I talk about a lot in the, um, the exteriors book as well. Anyways, the dark shot didn't have a very good sky. So this is a case where after you do that exposure blending, then you should probably think about doing a sky swap, which is how this guy ended up here. Now, if you've never done a sky swap before, I've got videos on that on this uh, YouTube channel. Look up here on the information bar and there's a link to uh, one of my tutorials on doing that. Let's move on though to our next example. And that's where we have this problem. It's a lot of shadow area. This is a lot to deal with. It's very difficult. So there was no good time of day to shoot this. <laughs> this was during the winter. Uh, sun was very low on the horizon, very deep shadows. So in a bracket, two stops higher, I've got this shot. Now just to show you an example, if I were to try to take a brush at this point and try to up the shadows, then I would start to lose a lot of quality in those areas. It starts turning very grainy. So I don't need to do that. I don't need to futz around with it. Let's back that out. Instead, I've got a shot that already exposes for that. I just need to have it blended in. The white balance on this, since it was in a very deep area, I knocked it down to negative 15. If it wasn't there and it was just at zero, it'd be too warm. So although that color temperature worked well when I was shooting the everything, the sky, the pool, everything looked good, shadow areas have to be cooled down. So that has to go back down to a negative 15. So if this were to be in Kelvin, if you were using raw files, it'd be about uh, about a thousand Kelvin cooled uh, to that point. And this is something, by the way, I show in, in a lot more detail in the exteriors book. If you're not familiar with setting your Kelvin 4 outside and why I prefer to use 5500 across the board and adjust later in post-processing, it explains it further there. And if you're interested in a tutorial on that, be more than happy to show you that as well. But let's go ahead and finish this guy off real quick. That's all we had to do, just like on our other example, and we'll open these as layers in Photoshop. So this is going to be a trickier example in that there's a lot of shadows, a lot of things, a lot of geometry we have to work around, but the quick selection tool does a good job of making this happen. So we'll go ahead and once again do our auto align, and I just used my action for that. You've seen that in other videos and in my book as well. Um, but we'll go ahead and move then the bright layer up to the top, just like we had before. We want it on top. Everything's been auto aligned, so he's looking good. We add a layer, mask, layer, mask, hide. Okay. Now, using the quick selection tool, I'm going to start selecting the shadow areas. And it does a really good job of finding where the shadows are. See, it didn't even pick up on that uh, section of the counter. I'm going to go over here. Around the pool, it kind of got funky on these shadow areas here. So if I don't want that selected, I just press Alt, use the quick selection tool, and it eliminates those areas. So there, we're looking good right there. Um, so that's looking pretty good. I might not have wanted some of this area in here, for instance, on the shadows, so I can tap in some of that and press Alt, whatever I need to do to kind of select that. It does a pretty good job, though, of selecting uh, these areas, and I can blend that in later also. But we're going to select then the awning, zoom out a little bit here so we can see what we're doing. And look how it also knew not to grab these highlighted areas of the house. So we're grabbing mostly the darker areas. So because shadows have a black outline around them typically, then uh, Photoshop is able to figure that out with the quick selection tool. Now I can grab the whole house here. Um, I can grab and make sure I don't have the RV selected. Uh, grab these other shadow areas and around here and whatever I think I need to select. And then all I have to do is like before, press X to swap my colors on the layer mask then I press delete press X to swap back and then control T to deselect 
Now it's a matter of blending these in. And you can see here, I didn't do a good job of selecting these. So between using a brush and eraser tool, I can start with a low flow brush, start bringing in some of these areas. I can you just go back and forth and, and bring eraser, brush, eraser, brush, and get some of that selected in. However, I want to blend it to whatever control though, and that's the important part, is that I'm controlling how much shadow and how much light is going to be in an area. There's a little bit that I missed over here by the RV, but for this example, I'm really not too worried about it. I could go ahead and tap in a little bit of that, try to blend that in like where that table was. And if I zoom out here, I can also see that this side of the house might be a little too bright. Maybe I don't want that much in there. So I can take an eraser and tap some of that out as well. And just darken that whole side just a little bit. So anyways, you're in control of it. Maybe brush in a little bit more over here too on the end. However it is that you want to do it, you are in control. So anyways, let's go ahead and finish this off with a layer flatten. Control S to save it. And it goes back then into Lightroom. Apply one of the bumps to it. And we'll maybe make a few adjustments to that and then correct for our geometry and do a little bit of cropping so that when we're done with that, maybe change our verticals a little bit to do our cropping, bring that down. And for this example, then that's what we have. So let's review where we were before, though. We took a shot and it was uh, exposing for the sky and everything else, but there's just too much shadow and the shadows were deep, extremely deep in this example. So with another shot out of a bracket, this one is two stops brighter, then we're able to do exposure blending to then have this finished shot. So once again, dark, two stops, and then exposure blended for our final product. So there are a number of advantages of using this technique versus HDR or trying to use just a single exposure and some brushes in Lightroom. For one, remember that exterior photos are the most likely to be printed by a realtor and not just for a flyer, but sometimes they'll use them on signs. I even have some that will use them on billboards. And also they go in magazines, especially if you're doing something for a designer. So knowing how to use this technique, it really can help out in a lot of circumstances. If I had used HDR, the HDR software would try to determine what areas need to be brought up. And also then I would have to then adjust all the various white balances for the individual shots in the bracket. And I'd be more likely then to also see halos and artifacts and other things that come with HDR. I don't want every single pixel throughout the frame adjusted for HDR. I only want the certain areas of shadows then brought out so I can get a lot more uh, of control by doing that as well. And once again, white balance is a big key when using this so you can in your individual frames make those adjustments. It also allows you since you're then already in Photoshop by doing this exposure blending, which using the quick selection tool allows us to get nice, good, fine lines. I can use polygon tools, other things where if I was just using a brush inside a Lightroom, not only would I be losing some quality out of that because it's trying to work with just that one exposure, but I don't get that type of definition. It's much more difficult. So a lot faster to do this than in Photoshop, which then after flattening those layers, I can do other quick adjustments too. I can use touch ups and if I wanted to add a brightness layer, anything that I wanted to do, I'm already in Photoshop to do that. Bring that back in though to Lightroom, make those final bumps and adjustments, and then I've got somewhat of a better usable product that's exposure blended and far more accurate than I would have if I just tried to do HDR processing. Anyways, I hope this tutorial was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.